Hello and welcome back to another devlog with me, Fred. We're gonna go through what I've done just like we always do. So let's get right into it. So in the last episode, I started reworking the entire movement system, refactoring, just trying to make it a lot easier to work with. And since then I've, you know, worked more. I had this nice list with everything I did, but I have that on my phone and I don't have the phone right now. So we're just gonna, just gonna wing it. I've always had this love for a game called Mirror's Edge, like the original, not the Catalyst reboot thing. How, how amazing the movement is. It's a unique title, you should check it out. And in that game they have a, a vaulting mechanic where you just vault over things and I, I, I've never seen a platformer do that so uh, I went ahead and added that to my game. So starting out I had issues trying to figure out how to set a maximum height of vaultable walls. As you can see here he just vaults up huge walls. But after a while figured it out and uh, here's the final product that we got right now. You can vault over ledges. When grabbing a ledge, you vault up instead of just jumping. You can vault up small blocks and you can vault into tunnels as well. When vaulting over objects that allows you to fly afterwards or get into the air, you get a little bit of a speed boost. I want to try and incorporate skill movement into the game so that skilled players can traverse levels a lot faster than novice players. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do that, but that's a goal of mine. So I did that, I, uh, I, I did the vaulting. Uh, I've watched a devlog by a guy called Pontypants on YouTube. Check him out, he does some great devlogs. And he like documents his entire process through the week where he works. And that's super cool now, because what I've done is just like go through the game, show him like, oh, this is what I did, but not actually show the process when I'm making it. So he records over time and shows it, which is super cool. So I was trying to do that. Really, I, I did try, but I, I kind of I kind of forgot to be honest. Somewhere along the way, I just forgot totally to to record. So uh, we got the vaulting, but other than that, I uh, I kind of forgot to document, kind of forgot to log the deving. But hey, we can still go over what I did since the last time. So what I've done is I reworked the ropes. So they're a lot more optimized now, thanks to my friend Julian. The rope is segmented into an arbitrary number of subsections, and then I draw a line between each section. Previously I drew each single pixel, which was very, very computationally heavy. But now since I only draw around like 12 lines per rope, it's a lot more efficient. They sway calmly in the wind and they also interact with entities when they move through them, just like you can see here with the player objects. I got a few comments saying like, oh, why is he floating up the wall? Why isn't he climbing? And Oh, he's sliding when he's crouching. What the fuck is this? I'm working on it, bro. So uh, I got the animations for that in. So now they don't float anymore. There you go. You know, it's kind of boring to just run around in blue blocks. So I just sat down and uh, started working on some backgrounds and some tiles just to kind of set dress the scene. Otherwise, it's just green foliage and blue blocks. So I got that in. So now it looks like this. I hope I show something. It sounded kind of quiet, the game. So I, uh, I, I looked into adding some sounds and now it sounds like this. Me and my girlfriend goes out to her family summer house sometimes and I'll, what I like to do when I'm out there is to just work on something entirely different from, from what I'm doing at home just to kind of like separate me from the main project and so what I did last time we were there is to just work on a menu system just like a proper one for Candlehead reworking that as well um, so I've got that done a lot of navigation both with controller mouse and keyboard working with uh, settings like sliders binary on off switches and like list stuff changing the resolution so I got that I haven't put it into the main project yet but I'll hopefully show some footage of that there you go wow Ooh, well that looks awesome that'll get into the game eventually my next step that I want to do is to add attacking and uh, getting hurt 
no promises might might change my mind but i have implemented hurt and hitboxes into the game just to kind of facilitate the ability to hurt the player you can't see them but they're there what i also want to do hold up hold up hold up this right here is called Owlboy. It's a video game. Uh, in this game, whenever the character gets hit by, I think it's like a hard hit, he gets stunned and he just like whoop, flies away. That's super cool. So I've uh, implemented that into the game as well. It's kind of weird when you like games where you fight this like huge ass demon thing. It's like and you just like start blinking, you know, knock back nothing. So I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So uh, the plan is to when you fight like big ass enemies, like the tweet I tweeted about the monster thing. The plan is that when he like, you fly 200 meters into the wall, just get fucking knocked out, stand up and you're like, shit, this is gonna be a fight. I, I also did this attack animation, which people seem to like. So I'm, I'm gonna implement that. I mean, I think that's it pretty much. I hope you like the new thumbnail, that's new. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching this devlog. I appreciate you coming in, watching, enjoying the show. If you're interested in what I do, you can check out my Twitter somewhere, I don't know, in the corner of the video. I do stream on Twitch occasionally, don't trust me, I can go like two months without streaming, but sometimes I do stream a lot, so you can check me out there, I stream the game, I stream pixel art, whatever. Bye!